So let's continue in chapter three with what they call the addition and subtraction principles. We've actually already used these, um, but uh, this will be a way to hammer, hammer them home and also to introduce some important terminology. So um, here we go. So uh, the crucial piece of terminology that I wanted to, to make sure that everybody had heard is the term disjoint. So um, two sets are disjoint if their intersection is empty. And a collection of n sets are disjoint if any pair of them is disjoint. So you can, might have 20 sets and they're disjoint if no two of them have an element in common. So I just want to emphasize here that you could have three sets, A, B, and C, all of whose intersection is empty, but they might still not be disjoint. I mean, maybe the easiest way to see that is with a Venn diagram. You could have um, A here, B here, and C here. And then you notice that A intersect B is the empty set, but A intersect B is not and B intersect C is not, because we have these regions here. So to be disjoint means that um, no pair of them overlap. So a picture, a, a, a Venn diagram for a collection of disjoint sets, so these are not disjoint. Here's a picture of some disjoint sets. There's no overlaps at all. And what's true about disjoint sets is that the number of elements in a disjoint union or a collection of disjoint sets, the union of a collection of disjoint sets, is given just by this, as this, assuming they're all finite, is just the sum of the number of elements in the set. Um, I'm not going to prove this because we don't really have a good way at this point to talk about how you would count something like this. But I mean, I think the basic idea just is that if you were to enumerate the elements in this union, since each element of the union belongs to exactly one of the sets, if you count up the number of elements in each set and add them together, you're only going to count each element of once. The thing that can go wrong if the sets overlap, the reason it's not the case that the number of elements in the union of two sets is the sum, is because if the two sets overlap, let's say here, in this example here, um, if you count the elements in A and you count the elements in B and add them together, the elements in the intersection get counted twice. But if they're disjoint, that doesn't happen. So this is what the book calls the addition principle, that if you, if you have sets that have no overlap, then you can count the number of elements in the union of the sets by counting the number of elements in each set separately. Uh, the subtraction principle is even more basic. It just says that if you have one set contained in another and you um, you remove it, then the, um, the number of elements in the difference is the uh, difference in the number of elements. So here the issue is that if here's x and here's u, then the number of elements in x minus u are the number of elements out here, and it's pretty clear that that's x minus u. The reason there, there's anything to be said here is that x minus u makes sense even when u is not a subset of x. So you could have a picture like this. You could have x, and you could have u, and then this would be x minus u, and here you have that the number of elements in x minus u is not equal to the number of elements in x minus the number of elements of u because u is not contained inside x. But here you're okay. Here u is contained inside x. Here it is. And this is what the book calls the subtraction principle. And again, I'm not going to prove this, um, and you can take it as a fact. Uh, it is provable, but would 
in the way the book is set up, we talk about counting way at the end. And uh, I mean, formally speaking, we talk about counting. So we're just going to have to, at this point, uh, take these as, if you like, as axioms. This is problem three from the problems in the book in section 3.3. We have we deal five cards from a 52 card deck and line them up in a row. So for those of you that aren't up on your cards, a, a, a 52 card deck of cards, half the cards are red and half are black. So there are 26 red and 26 black. Um, and then other than that, they're divided up into suits and face cards and so forth. But the main thing to know is that the 26 red cards are all different from one another and the 26 black cards are all different from one another. So uh, the five cards are dealt from a 52 card deck and lined up in a row. How many are there in which all five cards are the same color? So if all five cards are the same color, then what that means is that we are um, either going to have them all be red or we're going to have them all be black. So the total number is equal to the number where all are red plus the number where all are black. These are disjoint sets because you're either red or you're black. So you can't, there's no lineup which is in both of these. If they're all red, then you're dealing the card. So there's each, the first, the first card that you deal, there are 26 possibilities. The second position, there's only 25 possibilities left because you've used up one of the cards. This is similar to the one that we did in the previous section where we were looking at where there's no repetition. Since we're dealing the cards from a deck, we can't use the same card over and over again. So we deal the first card, it's one of 26. We deal the second card, it's one of 25. We deal the third card, it's one of 24. We deal the fourth card, it's one of 23. And we deal the fifth card, it's one of 22. So the total number where all are red, the first group is 26 times 25 times 24 times 23 times 22 times 21. And the same thing is true where they're all black because, again, we have 26 cards. Same for all black. And so the total is 2 times 26 times 25 times 24 times 23 times 22 times 21. If you're confused about this descending product, go back and look at the example we did where we were making lists of letters without repetition to see where these, um, why uh, the multiplication principle gives you this descending product. And now I think we have a complicated one. So we're going to make words of length six from the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight such letters. Um, there's no repetition, so each letter can only be used once, and the word must contain two consecutive vowels. Well, there's only two vowels to deal with here, A and E. And so if the word contains two consecutive vowels, and only each letter can only occur once, there's really only two possibilities. Either the word contains AE next to each other, or it contains whoops, EA next to each other. So immediately we can split our problem into counting how many words of length six contain AE and the letters chosen from B, C, D, F, G, H, each only occurring once.
Well, we can further divide up the problem because AE, here's our word of length 6, AE can occur, we can split it up into the case where AE is the first two letters, where AE is the second two letters, where AE is the third and fourth, the fourth and fifth, or the fifth and sixth letters. Those are the only possible places we can put AE because they have to be next to each other. So we've split up our words into six groups, one, uh, sorry, one, two, five groups, depending on where the AE occurs. How many words in each group? Well, for the other words, we have four choices from B, C, D, F, G, H, but we're only allowed to pick each letter once. So for this position, we would have six choices. And for this one, five. And for this one, four. And for this one, three. So this group has six times five times four times three elements. And again, the descending sum, the descending product comes from the fact that each letter can only be used once. So if we put a B here, then our next choice has to exclude B. So there's only five remaining possibilities. And A and E have already been used up. We get exactly the same calculation in each of the other uh, five places. For a grand total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 words which contain AE plus the other letters, no letter occurring more than once. But this is only half of the ones we have to consider. We also have to do the same thing with EA. And we get the same count. So our final number is 2 times 5 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3. So we first divided our set of words into those which, began, which had an AE and those which had an EA. Those were disjoint. Then we divided the ones that had AE into those which had AE in the first two positions, in the second and third, in the third and the fourth, in the fourth and the, fourth and the fifth positions, and the fifth and the sixth positions. And then each of those we counted using the multiplication principle and then we added it all together.